first contest between Great Britain, Italy, and the United States. These are the first pictures ever to be taken of some of Britain's new hush-hush fighting machines. Machines that set a standard that is far ahead of any of the world's aircraft. To the man in the street, perhaps the most amazing machine is the Spitfire, a land version of the famous seaplanes that won the Schneider Trophy. It's the fastest single-seater fighter in the world. And although here again we're not allowed to give exact figures, we may say that it flies at something between 300 and 400 miles an hour. There's still a couple of minutes left in this reel for aviation, so here's one of the most effective weapons of the air in existence, the Spitfire. Deliveries of Britain's super machine are soon to be made to the RAF, and new pilots will shortly be flying this type. The Spitfire is very hush-hush, of course. Though you can see from this picture that it can perform aerobatics with ease, you can only guess its speed, for that's one of the Air Ministry's secrets. It would be used, if necessary, to intercept and destroy raiding bombers. A welcome sight is to be seen in the Vickers Works at Eastleigh, one of the factories where the production of Spitfires is rapidly going ahead. In the present state of Europe, it seems that the country couldn't possibly have too many of these fighters, which claim to be the fastest in the world. Their powerful engines are lined up ready for installation, and every operation of manufacture and assembly is carried out with that delicate precision for which British workmanship is famous. On completion, the machines are given a thorough tryout, and you'll no doubt be pleased to notice the rapidity of their climb and their handiness in the air. The constant drone of machinery in our aircraft factories is the music of victory. Over acres of floor space, men and women are turning the money from the thousands of Spitfire funds into machines for the RAF. From government training centers, these girls have come to take their place at lathe, miller and drill. With the confidence of experts, they set about the job of shaping raw metals from the foundries into the components of more than a thousand horsepower demons of the air. From factories to assembly sheds, where skilled mechanics and expert fitters and riggers begin to bring the planes to life. Here is where your salvage, your saucepans and shillings and pence have, under the magic wand of industry, become part and parcel of the finest fighting aircraft in the world. Producers of British aircraft have already proved that they turn out the best planes in the world. They are now intent on proving that Britain is first in quantity as well as in quality. These are Spitfires in the making. And everybody knows what they have done for Britain, thanks to the skill of British workers as well as to the pilots themselves. Each new Spitfire undergoing its flying test bears witness to the great contribution of British design and workmanship. goes into the last Spitfire. The five years work of number one civilian repair unit at Cowley Oxford comes to an end. It all started in the life and death days of the Battle of Britain. Pilots brought in their damaged kites, stood by while they were patched up, took straight off again for another crack at the Luftwaffe. Now we've got more Spitfires than we know what to do with. Still, if the missus doesn't fancy a fighter plane in the empty garage, tell her to sit tight, for here they come. Britain's post-war cars exclusively photographed by Pathé Cameraman. Not so long ago, it would have been a Spitfire coming off the belt. Before the war, this plant could turn out a car a minute at 60 an hour. In a day, let's say 600. In a week, well, you work it out. A sight for war-weary eyes. Cars, cars, and more cars. And the workers roll up in limousines. Perhaps they couldn't get a permit.